guys welcome back again this is the open Road tv welcome back to another video um behind me you have you know the ten commandments of god in the new testament yeah it's not written like it was in the old testament like right here but you also find those ten commandments written in the bible today's topic we're gonna talk about our dear friend the need god net video um because i wanted to make some not only to listen to more of the thing what he was saying and i think i was i think god was like hey you need to talk about that part show them what how seven the adventists think about some of these things we have to understand no nobody knows everything perfectly as it is you talk about a, talk to a baptist they might think about something they are convicted that it is true and we are like ah, we don't see it like that in the bible so that happens now let's go and talk about what he's going to talk about because today he's going to talk about number i think five the investigative judgment Let's see what he has to say about that part. Number five, investigative judgment. The SDA church teaches that Jesus entered into the sanctuary in heaven on October 22nd, 1844 to begin investigative judgment upon those who've been forgiven to see if they are worthy of eternal life. Namely, are they keeping God's commandments? But the Bible never speaks of any such thing. It never speaks about Jesus entering into a different place in heaven on October 22nd, 1844. Since Christ ascended, he's already been in the Holy of Holies in heaven interceding for us. Plus, if God is determined determining who is worthy of eternal life based on keeping commandments, that's opposite to the gospel. We are saved by grace through faith, not by keeping the commandments. Number six. Okay, so he said a lot of things right here. So what we're going to do is I wanted to make sure everybody hears all that he had said. And we're going to talk about how we as Seventh-day Adventists understand it. So... Let's talk about, let's actually go back and really look at that part again. Let's go. Never. Number five, investigative judgment. The SDA church teaches that Jesus entered into the sanctuary in heaven on October 22nd, 1844 to begin investigative judgment upon those who've been forgiven to see if they are worthy of eternal life. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, to anyone... You know, wondering whether the Bible talks about investigative judgment. Um, if you are looking for the actual um, invest, if you are looking for the actual investigative judgment word, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it in the Bible. The same way, you're not gonna see the word Seventh Day Adventist in the Bible. But does that mean? Now, let me show you how we know that Seventh-day Adventism has been there for a long time. Look at the Bible, talk about Enoch. You remember Enoch, the one who God took to heaven? The Bible said Enoch prophesied of Jesus coming with ten thousands of his, of his angels. What was that? That was the advent of Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Not only that, Enoch was a Sabbath keeper. You know how we do that? Enoch was in the lineage of Abel. Cain was the one who left God. Enoch in the lineage of Adam and Cain and um, Jared. They were God's keeping people. They lived before the flood. So that's how we know that, okay, Seventh-day Adventism is not that we just popped up. Yeah, the name popped up in 1863, but the concept, the belief was already there. They were waiting for Christ's second coming. At the same time, they were keeping the Sabbath. Moses was waiting for Christ's second coming. Guess what? He also kept the Sabbath. So that's how you know, the word, that's how we know that Seventh day Adventism is not just new, the name is new, but the beliefs have been there before. Second thing, 
uh, investigative judgment. That word is not in the Bible. Trinity, that word is not in the Bible. But when you study it, you can see that, oh, hmm, it looks like th th three in one Trinity. Now, let me talk about investigative judgment. Is it true that the Bible does not talk about investigative judgment at all? Meaning, you will not find the word, but does the idea of investigative judgment not at all in the Bible? I don't think so. I, I don't believe that's the case. I think we do have a message of that in the Bible. But if you don't study it, you're not going to see it. Let me see what else he has to say before I move on. Namely, are they keeping God's commandments? But the Bible... Okay, never mind. So he is going to talk about something else. So let me just quickly talk about the investigative judgment. So... Here is the idea for the investigative judgment. If you guys don't know, I'm going to give you like a quick story, a quick history. In 1844, William Miller, when he had his study done, they believed, you know, the earth was the sanctuary. Hence, if he, as he studied the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8, and it says unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed, since at that time, most people believed that the earth was the sanctuary, then Jesus would come back and cleanse the earth, which is a not an uncommon thing to do. But of course, since because they never knew there was a message called the sanctuary in the Bible, so of course, they made that mistake of saying he would come. But when after that disappointment came, guess what happened? They went, some of the people went back to the Bible to know what went wrong. And that's when they found the sanctuary message. So when they found out, wait a minute, there's actually a real sanctuary in heaven. So if it has to be cleansed and the earth is not the sanctuary, then something has to be going on in heaven we don't know about. That's how they found out that, wait a minute, there's something called the investigative judgment. The investigative judgment happened mainly on the Day of Atonement. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest goes into the most holy place one time a year to actually cleanse the camp at the end. And at that time, the people were to be in repentance mode because if people, if someone did not repent, they would be cut off from the camp. So, if you if you don't understand that, please, you can talk to a Seventh-day Adventist or you can comment below. And I, I would literally do some more study to explain to you what that Old Testament sanctuary message portrays the work of Christ right now in heaven. But we're not going to go to the deep thing. Let's just go to the surface level. Is it true that the concept of investigative judgment is in the Bible? Well, as he mentioned in the video, um, if you guys remember, as he mentioned, he did say that uh, God is going to see who is going to be saved or not, right? Let me quickly go back. Okay, let's see here. Best to give judgment upon those who have been forgiven to see if they are worthy of eternal life. Namely, are they, are they keeping God's commandments? But, the Bible but, okay, so here's the thing. And he says that it is the investigative judgment upon of for the people that have been forgiven. So let me actually say this: if it is not true that there is a there is no investigation right now happening, then I'm gonna go to the book of First Peter. We're gonna start. I was gonna start in Genesis, but I'm gonna go to First Peter right now. First Peter, chapter four. Chapter four, and. Peter is talking about from verse number 12 to verse number 19, where it says, 
Uh, oh. Wait, is it first Peter? Did I write? Uh, where is that? Where is it at? Where is it at? Okay. Beloved, I think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and the God rest death upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of you, but on your part he is glorified. And then we go to verse number 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody or in any other man's matter. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. 17. For the, for the time is come, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins with at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? So in a sense, we are being judged. Because when the trial and the tribulation comes, Jesus said, He who endures until the end shall be saved. Meaning, something is going on. There has to be an investigation of how are you living according to the light that God has given you? If things happen and you say, you know what? Uh, I don't want to lose my life for Christ. Guess what? There will be a judgment as well pronounced upon you. But let's leave that part for a moment. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter, chapter 3. Chapter 3. So, um, like I was saying, when let's read, let's look at chapter three. So we know what happened in chapter three, right? We had the fall of Adam and Eve. Now we do know, we do know that God knows everything already. God knows everything. He knew they were gonna fall. But let's see what actually happens and tell me if the idea or the principle of investigative judgment if it's not there. Verse number 9. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Why would God say to Adam, Where are you? If you guys have, in, if you guys have children, if you guys have, ch uh, some of you may have children, and you hear something bad happens in the kitchen. You heard a noise, but you don't know exactly what it is. Do you not get up to investigate the matter? Yes. You go to find out, wait, what happened here? How did it happen? Who did this? Right? To investigate what's going on. Uh, I'm also let me check. Okay. So you go to Evelyn to investigate. So basically, that's the same thing here. God is saying to Adam, where are you? Basically, giving us an account that he came to investigate the matter. It is as simple as that. And he said what? I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat? Yeah, the woman do give me give me all the food and I eat. Oh, the woman, what did you do? Why have you done this? Oh, the serpent began me and I ate. And God said, okay, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle. What happened here? God investigated the matter, found out, not because he didn't know, but to give us an account of this is how things went out. I'm making sure people know so when I make my judgment, they know I am just. So, investigated the matter. He said, wait. He went to Adam because he was supposed to be the one in charge. He said, wait, what happened, Adam? Well, the woman you gave me, you know, she gave me all the food. Woman, 
What did you do? Well, the serpent began me. Now, understand, animals cannot speak. So something must have happened. What did God do? He pronounced a judgment to the animal. He didn't even investigate that. He just pronounced a judgment upon the animal. And he said, oh, because you've done that, I'm going to do this. You, you are now cursed. So there was an investigative judgment that happened first to find out the guilty. And then there was a verdict. What was the verdict? The snake, you are now from this point, you're going to be cursed above all animal. The woman, your verdict was, the verdict for the woman was, I'm going to multiply your sorrow at conception. Right? That was the verdict. And then for the men is, because you listen to the voice of your wife and you've done this, I'm going to uh, curse the ground for your sake. Would that would it make sense to say that the concept of investigative judgment is biblical? Okay, maybe you don't believe this one. Let's look at another chapter. Chapter 11. In chapter 11, Tower of Babel. What happened? Bible says this. And the whole world was of one language, of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime that day for mortar. And they said, Let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Let us be scattered abroad upon the, face of the, upon the face of the whole world. And then what happened next? Verse number 5. Interesting. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. Now, you wonder, why would God have to come down? Let me actually look at it. Let me see. I'm going to change it to this one. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see. The word see, which is the number 7200, It means primitive root to see or figuratively meaning to uh, advise self, appear, approve, behold, consider, discern, enjoy, experience, indeed, um, take heed. Um, so basically, Bible was saying, God is looking at this and is considering what they are doing. Um, I don't know if they're gonna give me give me like more of the um. Let's see what else they do. They actually use here to perceive, to present, to provide, to regard, to gaze. Um. Advise self, okay, um, to consider. So, it's not like a just, oh, I came to see what's happening. It's more like, okay, let's actually find out. Let's take a look. Let's actually consider what they are doing. So, if we are going to consider something, you have to take the time to actually think about it. Now, I wanted to find another, um, if I can find something other than that. Okay. So, I want to find like a, a, a much bigger, I would say a much bigger um, explanation. So, I'm going to show you what I actually found on this one. This is what I found right here. When I went to find the actual another another way of looking at the word to see. Okay, I'll make it bigger for you guys so you can see everything. You see, we looked, we saw we saw appear, we saw approve, we call visible, became visible. But we have the word here, examine. Examine. You see? 
exam we saw the word consider already but when i look for like a deeper words here examined or make an inspection make an inspection if you are inspecting something you are basically investigating that thing you came to investigate what's going on so could we say that that word investigative judgment could that be actually biblical i believe so now let me go back to that other one okay and Lord said behold the people is one and they have one or one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them that they, they have imagined to do let us go down and what what was the verdict the verdict was to confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech god came down investigated the matter he said that wait a minute that's what they are doing let us now make a verdict confuse their language i mean god could have destroyed them but decided to confuse their language let's look at another one um we could look at the example of Sodom and gomorrah actually what let's look at Sodom and gomorrah because i think that would be a great one to look at Sodom and gomorrah this is about this is um Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. God came down to be, to see what they were doing. What did Noah say? Noah said in verse number, um, if there are, what if there are 50? Where, where is it at? What if there are 50? God says, I'm not going to destroy it. What if there are 45? I'm not going to destroy it. What if there are 30? 30. I'm not going to destroy it. Okay. 20. No. 10. No. What was God doing here? He was showing Abraham, I investigated this area. There's not even 10. Not even 5. Not only that, God sent angels to investigate again. Right? Verse number 1 to verse number 11. And two angels came to Solomon and the Lord sat in the gate, and Lord seen them rose to meet them and bowed before them. They said, Hey, I pray you, turn into your, ser into your servant's house and tarry all night. Wash your feet and all that. What did they say to him? They said, Um, we cannot stay here. We have to go soon. Because that any press upon them greatly, and they turned unto him, and he entered into his house, and he made them a feast, verse number 3, and he did unleavened bread, verse number 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both young and old, and people from every quarter. And they called Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee to, to that night, and bring them out, that we may know them? So they came to investigate the matter and they're like, oh man, this is really bad. So whenever you see that we talk about investigative judgment, it's not like God doesn't know. God is keeping a record for us so we know that he did this because we can find out whether he was just or unjust. So I could probably go more. I could even give you the story of the parable of in Matthew chapter 22. Verse number 1 through 14. The parable of the wedding feast. That's another one. Talking about the, the idea of this investigative judgment. We could talk about Daniel chapter 7, chapter 8. About that. In the, I don't want to make the video too long. But just so you guys understand the idea of this investigative judgment we didn't now we made up the name but the the concept is right here that's why i was 
trying to give you guys stories from the Bible so you can understand, oh, that's the idea of investigative judgment. Now, I hope you guys understand this um, because that was the main point I wanted to talk about. I'm going to make a part two of that thing because his part is not done yet. So, if you guys still don't understand, you can put a comment below. Let me know and I can actually do some more study and help you guys understand this even more and more. Anyway, the guys, this is what you can this was again the open your TV. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button on your way out. Until then, bye for now.